guys. Welcome to What's Up E-Town. It's Captain Ron along with Jamie. Jamie, how are you, my friend? Awesome, as always. I mean, still uh, inside, but, you know, I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> I, I went on the road today. It was big. It was a big Are day. we kind of like half quarantined now? Is that what's going on? Are we half quarantined? What's going Quasi -quarantine, on? Quasi-quarantine? The double Q? I'm not sure, man. Quasi-quarantine. Uh, I, I went know. as far away from my house as I possibly could today. I went to <laughs> Rich Valley, Alberta. No, settle down. All yeah, the way you know, there, hey? The booming town of Rich Valley, Alberta. Hit the you know farm, where it is? Hey. It's a beautiful town. It was a Craftville hockey town, actually. Just there you go. For you. Fun fact, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I had the opportunity to go to uh, White Court and Alberta Beach today. Yes. Oh, wow. I know. I know. We, we were visiting Alberta. That's very yeah. nice. What's up, Meetown? Oh. What's up, Alberta? <laughs> expanding, <laughs> expanding, yeah. So, <laughs> hey, what's going on, man? We got somebody coming on to talk today. We do, we do, and you know what? Let's not waste any time. Let's bring him in. Let's ask him some questions. Let's, let's have see. some fun. That's that's what we do on What's Up Etown, right? Yeah. Let's see. I hit this admit button. Let's see who pops up today. Oh, look who it is! <laughs> you might recognize that face right there. That's Mr. Adam McHale from Now Radio. How are you, sir? Do I have a recognizable face? Like all of our billboards seem to be caricatures, you know, it's emojis right now. So, like maybe the voice will jog a little bit, but the face, I don't know. <laughs> Would We're you gonna like say to yes. We're gonna exactly. say yes. Recognizable. One hundred percent. Handsome as ever, my friend. Handsome oh, that's as ever. nice of you to say. That's nice. Man. Thank you. <laughs> well, we, we tried, and I agreed to come on here because Ron's gonna feed me compliments the whole time. That's that's exactly what I'm gonna do. That's <laughs> all this is. That's it's gonna be Adam. It's gonna be the Adam McHale show. Me praising you. That's all. Yeah, yeah, we don't necessarily always jump right to asshole mode. <laughs> oh, okay, good. That's for later on. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see if we get you there. I'm not sure. We never know. We don't script these things. So oh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Buddy, how are you, man? Great to see you. How's things going? Obviously, things have changed. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, obviously. What, what is new? What's new with you, man? What's going on? You're still working, obviously. I hear you on the air. So you're still working. What's things at the station like? What's going on? Jeez, uh, as far as new things, nothing. Like the weather's a little nicer, so I have like an additional space to clean here at the house. Like I was really liking the quarantine in the winter. You know, I had a nice little manage in all the rooms and now I've got like stuff to pick up in the yard and that kind of thing. So at least it's like a new space. It's a new experience. Uh, as far as the station goes, uh, it's been really nice. It's been really good to go in and have a mental break and have people share their stories. You really do have a deeper appreciation for storytelling. When you go in, you feel like you might be talking to the wall or talking to a lot less people because routines are off. And someone calls and tells an awesome story and just kind of you know knocks your socks off. So I've really come to appreciate that much more the people that are listening and that are interacting. So it's all about finding the silver lining in all of this, right? One one hundred percent, my friend. You must be getting tons of calls from inspirational stuff, from just stories of the quarantine. Must be crazy on air. Right? Oh, it's the exact opposite. Uh, interaction is way way down all across the board. Really? Like I hey, said, wow. Routines are off. Uh, and as far as the inspirational side goes, no, people are grumpy. Like it's, uh, we're on week nine now. So it's been ups yeah. and downs and ups and downs. First people were upset about it. Then we were all embracing it, right? With the zoom thing. We're like, Oh man, like we can play cards and be on zoom. I want to live forever. This is the best. Like don't have to worry about getting an Uber home beds right upstairs. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then kind of right down into the, Oh, that was the other part of it. Like all these acts performing live and stuff. That was super cool. Like really liked watching Willie Nelson's birthday on, the 420 celebration and stuff, but now right. it's it's the ninth week, you know, a little bit, little bit done, little stir crazy, like missing yeah. people a little bit. <laughs> well, and I think a lot of people are broke, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know you're not even going out anywhere, and you still got no money. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. It's very so, true. So so true. Well, I know I, we want to find out lots about you. We want to find out things we obviously don't find out about in your, in your regular show. You do a daily show, so people know a lot about you already. You talk about your family and all that stuff, obviously. You have two, two kids and one wife, right? Only one. Yes, only one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good for you. Good for you. That's legal. That's good. Thank you, yeah. I Google. <laughs> and I know, I know Jamie's been doing a little bit of research online about Adam McHale. I yeah. said, you know what? I'm not going to tell you a lot because I know a little bit of, we worked together a long time ago and, 
And we did a live terror show here in Edmonton, if people don't know that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called Live from the Standard. We had a lot of fun back in the day. We'll talk about that later as well. <laughs> oh, but awesome. I know Jamie's been doing some research on you, so he's got a few questions that he wants to ask you. So we're going we're gonna to let Jamie take the floor here for well, a moment. And so, yeah, and, and I, I do appreciate you coming on. I do listen to uh, Now Radio. It's one of my favorite stations, actually. I, I like the conversational piece behind it. And uh, Ron and I have a mutual connection in Busta Love. Back hey, in the Chris, day. Yeah. So, uh, so, so we can we can talk about that later. But I think the first thing that I found, I'm going to say somewhat alarming. Um, and so we're going to give you an opportunity to kind of set the record straight. Like looking at just at Now Radio uh, on your bio, um, I just want to verify that favorite music says <laughs> Jimmy Eat World. And yeah, I love that band. They were okay. supposed to be in town, like, right now. The show was canceled in Midway. That was a legit response. So Adam, I'm okay. Now, I, we're going to put you on the spot here. Are you doubling down on Jimmy Eat World right now? What's wrong with Jimmy Eat World? I thought Asshole Mode was later on in the podcast, not oh. right away. No, we're not. You know, we're just, we just want to make sure that we've got our facts straight. <laughs> okay, so Jimmy Eat World, check mark. Check mark beside Jimmy Eat World. I didn't, I didn't expect that. Okay. Uh... Favorite drink? Favorite drink? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you know oh. what your bio says? Like, do, did you actually approve your bio? No, that's the okay. thing. Uh, okay, good. The bio, uh, I, my buddy used to work at the station, and so uh, I never did the bio, and so he just filled out the bio based on what he thought would be the answers. And he was, he was pretty good. Like, he used to rip Whoa. on me for liking Jimmy World like you guys are right now, so he put okay. that in. Right. Well, just for the record, though, I wasn't ripping on you. Like, you went right there, so I think there's some guilty pleasure there. Like, it's <laughs> guilty. Oh, uh, just I, trust me. I had to go defensive right away. I knew. You, I knew. We weren't going to bond over 23. Like, that's my favorite song, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so do you know what it says for your favorite drink? Do, are you aware? Coors Light? It, okay, it does. Is that accurate? Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you changed it. It's Keystone Light now. Keystone Light. <laughs> so keeping it light, that's good. That's important for the figure. And then uh, favorite book. Oh, yeah. That was completely Shanny. He wrote Horton Hears a Who, which I've never read. Is it still up on the website? No. So you, I guess your bio is kind of like the Wikipedia, hey? There's a walket in my pocket. That's, that's what it says. Wow. <laughs> okay. So we were. So do you know that book? Are you familiar with that book at all? No, you could quiz me on it right now. I'd get everything wrong. Or maybe I'd get something right. That'd be pretty cool too. Or maybe okay. I'm just playing it low key like I don't actually know. Walk well, in my pocket let, and want you to give me some trivia right now. There, there you go. Let, let me just read the first lines from the book. Sure. Did you ever have a feeling there's a wasket in the basket? <laughs> a Nero in your bureau? Hey. <laughs> I honestly think you may enjoy this book. When I heard okay. that, I actually thought, Adam, I was like, I think he likes, I think that's going to be his book. <laughs> Is the part of the bio up still where I had my son write a little bit of it? Yeah, yeah. that was okay. awesome. Okay, he that was that. legit. Foster did write that. Yeah. <laughs> we okay. love so, that. You've been in the radio business seven days, it said. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I asked him, like, hey, what do you think about Dad's show? And he's like, you've been on the radio for seven days? I'm like, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> so, yeah, it does, it does, in fact, say Adam is smart, talented, and is good at building Lego. Oh yeah, yeah, my son wrote that. Yeah, so, still well, that's cool. Although he's he's eight now, he just turned eight, so he just built like an 800 piece set all without oh, me. Wow. Like normally, normally wow. he'd ask for help like once or twice, he did the whole thing by himself. It was like a real cats in the cradle moment. Like I probably yeah. should have spent a bit more time <laughs> with him doing that because now he doesn't need me anymore, it's <laughs> all done. Did that's you feel it. like, did you feel cheated on or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I need something to do too, man. We've been in quarantine for nine weeks. Pass over that Lego, man. We played every board game in the house. <laughs> yeah, all board. A lot of board games going on, eh? Yeah, <laughs> there's totally a lot of board games. Going well, there on. we go. Okay, so we have at least going on over here too. We have at least debunked the bio. So for those of you who want to know who Adam McHale is, watch what's up, E Town. Ignore the now radio bio is really yeah. all there is to it. Okay. Do people cool. even go to radio station biographies anymore? <laughs> Absolutely, they do. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, good. Especially okay. before they know they're going to meet you for the first time. <laughs> exactly, right? 100%. <laughs> it's funny because I was reading it and I'm like, I know, I'm like, this is a really weird bio. And I was like, for two seconds, I'm like, no, I'm off. I'm like, I knew it was your son right away as soon as the writing and everything. Yeah. By the way, talking about your son, the video you posted of your daughter about hockey. 
Can you, oh, if, yeah, if you haven't yeah. seen that video, can you just explain what we're talking about, first of all? Uh, she, she, oh, sports. Yeah, Foster growing up, you know, I tried my best to bring him in. He had a little Andy Elton to go Bengals. Um, he uh, would try and watch the game with me, but didn't have the attention span. And Maya, right from when she could pay attention to a screen, has loved sports. And so, yeah, she always asked, can we watch hockey? And we were down here in the basement. It was right after the season was canceled. I think it was the first weekend. Well, not canceled, but postponed until they figured that out, right? And so she asked, can I watch hockey? And I'm like, oh, I haven't broken the news to her yet. So mm-hmm. uh, I brought out the phone, put it in selfie mode, and the same thing, like, hey, Maya, what do you want to watch? And yeah, hockey, and I had to break it to her, like, I'm sorry, like, hockey's not going to be on for a while. <laughs> and she just starts breaking down and crying, right? So I asked her to smooth things over. If uh, she wants to watch an old game, we can watch uh, Cam Talbot fight Mike Smith, and she liked that. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> put on the game was, afterwards and watched an old game. It was absolutely the funniest clip. She is so cute. That's awesome. Um, is that still on your Twitter account? So people, we can direct people there to check oh, it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. still there. Yeah, that's actually, that, that went viral. Like, I've never, you know, as, as attention-seeking as radio is, I've been doing this for 17 years, and you'd be lying to yourself if you weren't a little bit attention-seeking with the job, right? You want to share course. some knowledge. You want people to like what you're doing. Right. Uh, my daughter has gone viral, you know, with that whole <laughs> video that was shared, uh, I think, 300,000 times or something. Wow. And, and my Holy cat. My cat went viral around the world like oh, 20 times over. If you were, just as a test, if you really? were to Google cat sitting on stairs, the first cat that comes up is my cat. She looks like a demon. Her eyes, I shot that, uh, took the picture in uh, our house when we first moved in. She sits like a person. So I put that picture up on Reddit years ago, and it's, it's gone around the world. There's so many memes of it. Like they've Photoshopped her into... Uh, tires swings and meeting other cats there's people online that claim it's their cat it's always on buzzfeed lists at the end of the year and so like as much as you know i put myself out there all the time on my socials and on my show my daughter has a viral video the cat has gone viral and i'm i'm just regular old adam still I, yeah i'm looking i'm looking right now at oh cat. My God. I, I always told myself i would never actually google cats First of all, so here I am. Yeah, reddit.com. I see a cat and it's, it looks quite comfortably sitting, almost My legs goodness. crossed. That is unbelievable. And it looks Boy, like, it looks like she's trying to put her paws in, a, in what would be pockets. Yeah, yeah. That's, she was actually the highlight of the quarantine. She hurt herself like a week and a half ago, so I had to go and do the drop-off at the vet. If you guys yep. had to do like the social distancing drop-off. But they don't let you leave, so you have to stay in the parking lot. So everyone else was just like playing on their phone. So like it was the most social I'd been in a long time, like just making small talk with people across the parking lot. Like, what's your pet in for kind of thing. Wow. It was actually a highlight to go and see people out there. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Adam. So I know, okay, so your kid has way more notoriety yep. than you. Your cat is obviously more popular than you. Yep. But you know what? I'm going to tell you that makes you the smartest guy because you, you've you surrounded yourself by more famous things. By association, yeah. So, we, there you go. We, so and very guys, wise. We haven't even talked about your wife yet. We also know she's way more famous than you. So, <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> I know all of her stories. What are you alluding to? I don't oh know. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble. Backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. Edit, edit. <laughs> I mean, you've got a kids that have gone viral and a cat that's gone viral, and I've got a co-host named Ron. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not very Just impressive, buddy. Jamie. Captain Ron, you know I love you, buddy. Come on. <laughs> no, I love Ron, too. Adam, man, it's so good to see you, buddy. I got so much to talk to you about. We haven't talked for a while, so it's like I'm, I'm thinking of personal stuff we want to talk about, but obviously we won't do that now. But I know you grew up in Cold Lake, Alberta. I did. Tell the, tell the people what it was like to grow up in Cold Lake, Alberta. It was awesome. I really liked living in Cold Lake growing up. It was super cool. You know, one of those places that you don't really appreciate until you leave, and you're like, oh, wow, you know, we, we actually had a maid. We had a movie theater. No one yeah. else had a movie theater. Like, that right. was a big thing. Our rival right. town, like, whenever you wanted to get into it with them, like, that was, that was the thing. That was the knockout punch. Oh, yeah, well, we have a movie theater. So is that it's, Bonneville? That's Bonneville. That's Shelbyville. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Shelbyville. <laughs> yeah. We did, we did not like them very much. Yeah, they would always come to our town to uh, watch Titanic because we screened it for a year and a half in our theater. Oh, but wow. we still had it, and they did not. A year and a half with Titanic. Honestly, it was it was close to a year. They kept there was four different theaters all in the one building, and the 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 primo one. You know, they have the big one. It'd be like the AVX one today. 
with like yeah. the big mm-hmm. sound and like the reserved seats. That one was permanently Titanic the whole oh, time. Oh man. <laughs> How many times did you see it? Uh, it, it I saw it. I saw it a few times. <laughs> a few oh times. Goodness. A few times. There, very nicely done. Hey, so in Cold Lake, was it true? Like Maverick and Goose buzzed the tower like every day, or what? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people. I live on the south side of Edmonton, and that's like the number one complaint in the neighborhood. You know, it's suburbia out here, but everyone hates the sound of the planes landing at the airport. Which yeah. honestly, I've missed. Have you guys noticed that at all? There's less yeah. planes in the sky during the pandemic. I live in Leduc, so it feels the same all the time. Okay, yeah. I uh, I don't mind the sound of that at all, because that's exactly what Coal Lake was. It was just yeah. constantly planes buzzing over top of your house, and they would have maple flag every single year. That was a big highlight in Coal Lake, too. That was one of the coolest jobs I ever had. There was a British military jet that hit a Canada goose, and so it was my job every day after my regular job doing truck there to drive down to Calgary to get parts and bring it back for them to service uh-huh. the planes. So it was cool to meet all those military people, but we hated when they would come to the bars in Coal Lake because every single one of them would lie and say they were a pilot. Every single one. So we'd look for the short guys and be like, okay, that's the pilot. Like, that's the guy you can go home with. But we'd get mad that all these guys would come up from the states and different countries and accents were a big thing and they would, they would steal all the girls for like six weeks at a time. <laughs> How do you compete with a fighter pilot? You can't. You don't. You can't. They would do all these different like, songs and dances with us. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy, man. So you grew you grew up in Cold Lake. What gave you the radio bug? Have you always wanted to be on radio? Was it a performance thing when you were younger? Were you were you putting on shows in the basement like I did as a as a kid? And we know uh, it wasn't the money, so don't lie. No, jeez, it was not that. Um, <laughs> uh, in Cold Lake, they had a radio station. It was thirteen forty. Thirteen forty. CJCM. Classic hits. Hot new music. Nice. And Sean Burke was on that radio station. Sean Burke is now the morning guy at the Breeze. And he did a big thing kissing back in the day. So uh, I would listen every single day because we lived on an acreage out there uh, for the bus cancellations when it was cold. (laughs) I used to pray that I didn't have to go to school. Like, oh man, like I'll listen to Sean Burke in the morning. Yeah, (laughs) that's old school, right? Listening to the radio to find out if the bus is going to come because you didn't know he'd be standing (laughs) at the end of the driveway for a half hour. So I'd listen to Sean and, you know, small town radio had all these little things. They had the value drug mart trading post. That was nice. Like the rule was you couldn't uh, trade mattresses, no beds and no firearms. Everything else was, was free. They had uh, McDonald's McBirthdays on the air. And my buddy used to write down all the 18 year olds. And then he would try and meet them at the bar that weekend. He'd have the DJ call them over for shots. If it was Maple Flag, then we'd strike out because all the American pilots would totally take them away. And uh, Sean Burke also had a thing called the A&W Mystery Oldie. And so he'd play a snippet of an oldie, and you'd call in. If you got it, you'd win a teen burger from A&W. Settle down. Yeah, oh, yeah, big wow. prize, right? So That's every wicked. single day, every single day, uh, I would listen. I wouldn't know it, but one day it was uh, She Loves You from the Beatles. So, and I made it through. So Sean oh, nice. made, there we go. Yeah, Sean <laughs> made me give the old uh, She Loves You, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I won a teen burger on the radio. And I uh, got to go to the radio station that morning, pick up my little certificate saying what it was good for. And when I got to school, I was the man. Everybody heard it. There you Everybody go. heard it. It was awesome. And so instead of going to A&W and uh, just redeeming my teen burger there, I made sure to get it to go. And I brought it back to school so I could eat it in front of everyone, knowing it was the free <laughs> teen burger that I'd won on the radio that morning. And after that, I was hooked. I always kept it in the back of my head and, uh, yeah, managed to go to Nate for it and made it work after that. Awesome. That's, that's so cool. So, so you went to Nate, went to school, you got the bug from Sean Burke. That's, that's really weird that Sean Burke was out there and now moved to here. And he's kind of the one who kind of got the ball rolling for you. He kind of fell in love with it after that. That's the same thing with me, with Rob Christie and, and Audie Lentz here. I called into their show one day. It was like a Thanksgiving thing and you had to make a turkey sound or something like that. And I did a turkey sound and they had me on and I won. And that was, that's how I caught the bug. How, too. how did that sound? I I don't even know. <laughs> Worst gobble ever. <laughs> hey, hey, let's make you want to do your award-winning turkey sound? <laughs> let's let's make a deal that you don't ever say worst gobble ever on a podcast. <laughs> let's do hey, that. I kind of agree that that's probably a good idea. That's probably What do you think, Adam? You think that's a good idea? I think he's locked up. Zoom's being a little bit rude today. There we yeah, go. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, getting it on my end too. But I think we're back. I think we're yeah, back. Everything's we're back. Saying. We're so being, I don't together know. just to make sure. I'm I'm good. Yeah, we're good now. You guys, you guys, <laughs> no, go no ahead. gobbling. 
No, go- <laughs> no gobbling anymore. Yes, no well, gobbling. There's a 50% chance my wife, my wife will watch this, and I don't. she doesn't need to see me gobbling with you guys. <laughs> 50%? Now, nobody knows That's what we're talking really about. really good odds. It's not bad. I know. It's. I've been doing radio for 17 years, and my wife never listens to my show. Never. never. So that's good that you got a shot. Take well, the- we only got married. We only got married in uh, January, so we still like oh, each other. Oh, I see. Okay. We, we still Newly like each weds. other. Yeah. Honeymoon yeah, that's right. phase. That's right. <laughs> So you, you got on to Nate now. Let's get back to it here. Um, you, so you got into Nate. Where did you go from Nate? Did you get, uh, did you get on air right away here? I can't remember. No, uh, I went to Lloyd Minster. I went and did overnights at Border Rock 1061 The Goat. That was my first gig out there for my practicum. And over four months, I did the overnight show, which was just a blast. Like the learning curve out there was <laughs> amazing. It was yeah, super kidding. cool. It's too bad Lots that of, uh, That's when the... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, the goat? Mm-hmm. The goat still exists. It's still still going. Nice. It's still a station out there on the border, yeah. And uh, that's back when the oil field was just booming, right? So even during the overnight show, there was lots of rigs that would listen to you, and you know, they would call up and play some ACDC and hang on the phone <laughs> kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, I started doing a request show uh, behind my program director's back out there. Didn't ask permission because no one's up at 3 in the morning. So every, every night at three o'clock in the morning, I'd get a request for the Bearcat from David Wilcox and I would play it. And from there, I just moved on and grew a request show out there. Like the, the learning curve was crazy. So I spent four months out there and then came back to Edmonton. Nice. It's, just, it's just too bad that there's, no, there's not a lot of overnights anymore, right? There's not a lot of people to break their teeth in in radio anymore. It's really sad that that overnight is gone. Yeah, overnights were really big. And, you know, I actually got that request show idea from Tattoo Kelly, who used to be in Edmonton. He would do overnights at K97. It was K-Rock back then. So every single night he would kick off his show by playing a song on vinyl. And then uh, I wrote him saying, hey, like, I'm doing overnights in Lloyd Minster. Like, we're in the same boat, (laughs) you know, Uh, even though he had like a city of a million people and I had a town of, what, 20,000. But he said, yeah, do a request show, man. Do you have some fun. So he gave me that advice and kind of broke the mold from there. And I uh, got in a bit of trouble, but then afterwards, they actually liked what I was doing. They called it the Rockternal Request. Nocturnal oh, there you go. And uh, yeah, yeah, sometimes you got to push the envelope a little bit. And if your PD likes what you're doing, then you get to kind of have it your way and keep going with it. Yeah. And then from the GOAT, where did you go? 96X in Edmonton. I was hired at 96X to be wow. uh, overnights and Weekend Swing, they were the hit music alternative at the time. So they had like a crazy format. It was like the Ataris into Chantel Kraviazic into Nirvana. It was like a, an alternative station, but also played some hits, but their ratings were horrible. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, Power 92, which was a legend in town, you mentioned the guys earlier, uh, they uh, abandoned ship and they changed to the new Power 92.5. So that gave uh, the station an opportunity to keep the name 96X, but flip to a hit music format. So I'd only been there for a month and a half. And uh, all of a sudden, they brought us into the boardroom. I just finished an overnight shift, so I hadn't even slept yet. And we go into the boardroom, and they're like, guys, we're going to be flipping to what Power 92 was. We're going to be playing Eminem starting tomorrow. We're going to be playing 50 Cent starting tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And they're like, not only that, we got two Segways to give away. And they just announced Segways. They were oh, brand wow. new technology. So they come around the edge of the radio station, and we all got to ride Segways. And then I go home and I had to sleep because I was doing overnight. So I'm sleeping in the afternoon and I had these crazy dreams. I'm like, there's no way that we're going to be playing Eminem and giving away segues. And I'm working for my dream type radio station tomorrow. (laughs) And we flipped that. And then you and I did the standard thing uh, that launched in the fall. So I started my radio career in Lloyd Minster in January, went to 96X, did a format flip. And by September, we were that hit music station. And then Ron and I were live on the air from the standard in the fall. It was like the craziest 10 months just such a crazy 10 months. Absolutely. Incredible. And I know then, you, then after that, they switched to country radio. They went to they Big, Big Earl, correct? And then you mm-hmm. left town yep. for a little while. And then you came back. I remember you telling me about this new job that you got in a, a different formatted radio station. And you're kind of like, I don't know. We, we're going to see. It's different. And you were really excited about it. And I mean, look at the juggernaut it's became. Like, Wow. That's all I have to say. Like, yeah. Radio is some, some uh, unbelievable radio. Station. Which, so which station is that? 
<laughs> Twitter two point three on the dial. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're stationed in town with all the very, very annoying billboards. We were actually bought by Jim Pattison halfway through the run. And Jim Pattison, when they have free billboard space that they don't sell, we get to have that too. So on top yeah. of horrible billboards, you get even more horrible billboards, which is there nice. you go. But yeah, I was working for 917 The Bounce and I was at a real crossroads. I just got married and um, I was still loving radio, but things were changing. You know, like iPods were the big thing and, and people were, uh, attention spans were getting lower and lower. And so they, oh, and personal people meters came in too, where they could tell in real time how long people were listening and that changed things. Oh, wow. We just assumed, because before, you know, like the phrase that pays Power 92 plays today's best music and I show my money. It was to be memorable because people would write down at the end of the day what station they listened to. So they would say, oh, I think I listened for an hour, hour and a half. But PPM actually changed it saying like, hey, people are listening for nine minutes a day. And we're like, oh, crap. So they changed everything and made hosts shut up. And I was told when I was working for The Bounce, uh, Adam, there's nothing you can say that's more important than playing the next song. Broke my heart. Yeah, they wow. would make us. They would make us start the next song first before we talked, just to reassure people that hey, something else is playing. So yeah. if you got a 16 second intro on a song, it was heaven. You actually got to say who you yeah. were, you know, uh, yeah. front self for something coming up. It was it was great, but um, it was it was disheartening at the same time. You know, you want to share so much of your personality and tell good stories. You know, and I'm, I'm going to kind of give my opinion on the whole thing is I, I really think that that's a mistake by commercial radio. Really, I do honestly think that that's a mistake that they think that people don't want to listen to announcers, but you have all these other avenues to listen to like your, your, you know, your, your, your iPads and your song, you know, Spotify. I'm using all these old ones. I almost said songza. <laughs> songza. You know, you download your songs from Kazaa and uh, their shit. Right. Just, and my iPod. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, Where's I, the I, Napster I, reference? Totally, totally. <laughs> exactly, right? LimeWire. I made all my songs from LimeWire. <laughs> you know, and I just, I just think they've really missed the boat. I mean, they've done some stations like Now Radio, but I really think that that, that personality stuff is why people tune into radio. That's why oh, they fell in love with hosts. If they want to listen to just music, they have all these avenues to listen to music. They're going to do that. It's all you in know? your pocket now, right? Yeah, everything right. you want is all there with streaming. So. Yeah, when I was working for The Bounce, uh, they, uh, they set up a, a coffee meeting at Tim Hortons before I started my shift. And they kind of sold me on this radio station where they said, um, yeah, we're going to want you to talk. We're not going to have anything sponsored. Uh, nothing's ever been sponsored on our station. There's no traffic or weather brought to you by. There's no remotes on the weekend. There's no prizes to give away besides $100 bills. Yeah. Uh, they said, we're just going to let you talk. And uh, it was intimidating and I didn't believe them, but I was ready to cross the street for the chance to talk again, right? Yeah. So uh, I went and it, it's been a building process and a, and a very, very good learning process over the years, but uh, they've never broken away from that promise. It's been 10 years and, and we talk for upwards of three, four minutes of break sometimes, every two songs with no yeah. prizes to front sell to or, or contesting really. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a trip. So I've been with now, we turned 10 uh, this past February. It's been oh, 10 years. Wicked. That's unbelievable. I mean, on behalf of radio listeners in Edmonton, I'm going to speak for them. You have one of the best radio programs in the whole city. So I mean, you've been doing this for many, many years and I know everybody in Edmonton, and I appreciate it too. I love listening to your show. My wife always comes home. She's texting you on the text line, and you, you'll you say something on the air. I mean, and she, she just loves it. And I know you don't just do that for people that, that you know. You do that for everybody. I mean, you know? oh, man. See, I told you he was going to be nice again. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, it's always, it's full circle around full here, circle, man. Full circle. Yeah. I was only sticking around until he said something nice. Now I got to go, guys. Uh, All right. Sorry. That's been nice. <laughs> That's like, I got a page of things I'll say when you log off. Okay, sure. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know what? I actually, and, and I'll echo that. I, I, I do like the, the now format. I like the conversational piece to it. I think that when it came out, it was confusing for a lot of people, yeah. you know, and it, it's risky because it, it does come down. It's like any good host at karaoke or any club DJ or you have to have that personality that works and it's got to be a versatile personality. So it's risky because if you alienate listeners that just don't like you, then what do you do, right? So yeah. to be likable on a broad scale is really, really hard. Um, and you're doing it when people can't see you. So, you know, just 
just to be able to be creative and have worthy conversations and keep people engaged is remarkable. And I, I think I like it. I like that people come in and they can give their opinions and you can have legitimate conversations on the air uh, yeah. that, that are meaningful. I think that's very cool. And the music mix is good too. So yes. that's yeah, look, we, we actually run imaging from people. Like we'll actually talk to people that are coming to station events and stuff. And God, I miss those because everything's going to be out the window for a while. Yeah. Uh, but people will actively say like, I don't really care for your music, but I'll stick around for what your hosts are going to say. And yeah. we play that imaging. We will play that between two songs on the station. People saying, yeah, I don't really care for the music they're playing, but I do care about what they're talking about. Just keep is- that Jimmy Eat world going. Yeah, yeah. Do <laughs> you, you still have that queued up, Jamie? Didn't we have a song? Didn't we have something for him? Yeah, no, it's all right. We, oh, we, all, I know, that tune. we all know the song by Jimmy Eat World. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, speaking of the radio station, I know you guys do a lot of charity work, a lot of great things in the city, by the way. Bottle drives, like all kinds of different stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Is there something that's really close to your heart, Adam, that's that's really kind of touched you as as you've done all these all this stuff for different charities and people and fundraising? And is there one that really like just pulled the heartstrings and you were just like, oh my goodness, like I can't believe we're doing it. I think the the craziest act of charity that now family have ever pulled off was we were talking on the air about being down to your last dollar. We've all been that like I'm, I'm radio. I was a college student once, you know, like it, we've all had that feeling where it's like, I'm going to have to choose between, you know, craft dinner for supper or wildcat strong to get me through a Friday night kind of thing. Right. And you're just, you're staying home. You're watching a channel for free. So we were talking down to your last dollar. Right. So it was all supposed to be fun stories, but this one guy called and um, his name was Ed. And he said, you know, I'm actually down to that right now. And he said, I'm, I'm picking bottles and that kind of thing around where I live. And I think I'm going to lose my place. And, and he, he started breaking down on the air. And uh, I, I was recording the call. So I wasn't sure, you know, if that was something that I should put out there and share because the guy was sharing something so deep and personal. Um, but the station, I had a couple of hundred dollar bills uh, to give away, you know, to drive content and you give away how you see fit. And so I just gave him the 200 and I said, you know, it's the least I can do, you know, and, and let me know if there's any other way we can help kind of thing. And I aired the phone call and, uh, all of a sudden the phones lit up and people are like, yeah, I want to, I want to match that. And let's, let's get this guy down here and help melt and that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, so within 24 hours, we, uh, we got 8,000 bucks dropped off wow. at the radio station for this guy. All Edmonton. These- yeah. Edmonton. And oh, yeah. you guys. Wow, that's amazing. No, 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 no. And, uh, and back to that too, talking about like how much we get to talk. The best part about the station is how much others get to talk. Like what yeah. we're doing right now, there's nothing better than sitting down with a cold beer, sitting around a fire, sitting at the pub and, and having every person's eyes light up. Yeah, indeed. And, and then they're waiting for their turn to chip in and, and tell their story, right? So right. I like, I like the word conduit for that because, you know, I always say that I'm horrible at parties because all of my stories involve all the other stories that have come in. Like one time, this one guy told me this story, da, 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 right? <laughs> so yeah, it's all because of people. But yeah, back to the Ed thing. Like it was, it was pretty crazy. We had him come down. He didn't have a vehicle. A now family member volunteered to pick him up and bring him down to the radio station. And yeah, we, we surprised him with everything. And of course he cried and he was very grateful. And then we didn't hear from him for a while. And, um, at uh we, we have a carnival every single year at the end of summer uh yeah. so just after september long and this year i was on the cotton candy machine and there's a lineup halfway down the parking lot and i'm kind of doing my thing and you know making time to talk to each person and this you know guy he's clean shaven when i saw ed the first time he had a big beard he was clean shaven he goes adam it's ed I'm like, oh man, he said, I, I just want to thank you and everyone. Like you, you changed awesome. my life, man. I really appreciate it. I'm doing much better now. And, you know, and, and then he just walked away and did the crowd, you know, it was, wow. it was a super cool thing. So there's lots of charities to support, but you know, sometimes more often than not, it's the individuals that stand out and mm-hmm. how Edmontonians just want to help out. The city, the city is amazing for that stuff. Amazing. I mean, that literally is what the show is about, is about extraordinary Edmontonians. And I mean, mm-hmm. that's why we wanted to have you on, obviously. We, we, oh, Ron! I, I oh, know, Ron. I got it again! <laughs> I'm going to put some heart, like, on Instagram. There's going to be, like, little hearts flowing oh off. Oh, my you. God. We do the, no, no. I feel like I should leave you two alone for a few minutes here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So Ron, <laughs> yes. I just that for a moment, Jamie. <laughs> I just I just turned into a chaperone. 
Anyways, buddy, it's, it's been great to see you. We're going to ask you a few questions here. Um, I, the first one I always ask before we get into the three, the, the top three, um, uh, is uh, I'm, I'm just curious, what's a little known fact that people don't know about Adam McHale? Uh, that people don't know about me? Don't, Man, that's, don't know about you. That's, that's a really tough question. I hate to blow smoke, but I, I really do feel like what we do every single day on the show uh, I overshare everything. Like I'm a, I'm an open book. I really do pride myself in my marriage and on my radio show of never lying because then you don't have to recall the lies that you've told, which yeah. is great. You know, there's, there's a good part about being honest, but then you don't have to like, you know, have this little black book of like, Oh, how did I embellish this? I always tell the truth. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I really don't know how to answer that because I, I, put everything out there I, I think you just did you did you did the man and you you answered it like you always do honestly like truthfully that's that if you do put it out there and that's the thing i was always curious is there something we don't know about you and i mean you're right you are out there all the time you've always been like that with with your friends so i mean you know i mean i can text you not talk to you for a year and text you hey buddy what's going on Right away, there's a response. Hey, buddy, what's going on? What's new with you? Oh, that's because I'm married with kids. I need something else. Like, oh, hey, I have someone else to talk to. This is great. Human, human interaction. <laughs> Ron sent me this text about joining you guys in the podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago. And all of a sudden, I was like, okay, kids, we're going to Wendy's. I got some Frosties, and I, like, decontaminated them. I'm like, here, just have these. And I was just so excited to get on the phone and set something up and be talking to someone else. So. That's awesome. That's cool. So, so we're gonna awesome. hit you. We're gonna hit you with a piece we do with everybody that comes on. What's up, E Town? And it's the uh, What's Up, E Town top three. Uh, so, without giving you the opportunity to think, we'll put you on the spot. First question: What is your favorite restaurant in Edmonton? Could be past or present. Oh, close too. Yeah, Whoa, yeah. Okay. We'd like to keep things, you know, interesting. Would we count Beaumont? Because like we're so close to annexing them yeah. anyways. Like we're slowly yeah. taking their land away, and so they they tried to establish themselves as a city, even though they don't have a movie theater. Absolutely. You know, like, yeah. I I live in Leduc, so I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're next. We're I know. Over. We're gonna we're grab next. Them. <laughs> I I really like Chartier, and uh, I uh, I really like the way it makes my wife feel to be at Chartier because it's just fancy to say. So, you know, it's, it's semi-affordable. It's, it's very come as you are, though. And uh, they take a tremendous amount of pride in what they do out there. And the food is so good and French-Canadian themed. And they have a lobster poutine that is $90 on the menu. And one day I will do it. It's yeah. supposed to be shared in and amongst three people. but It's uh, how much? $90. Wow. Did you just say three people? Guess three. how many people are on this podcast right now. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except Will one of them has a... you share a poutine with us at Chartier when everything opens back up? I'm gay. Yes, let's do it. Hey, but let's just remember, Ron, you own, you own a promotions company. I own a DJ company and Adam's in radio. So where yeah. are we getting the $90? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to bring our wives, boys. Yeah, you guys want a dumpster dive outside of Chartier? It seems like... <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just saying actually i'm glad that you mentioned that because ron told me about chartier uh a couple of months back and so i i gotta go check that place out i've not been so but you're the second person that's told me specifically that that's a place to go so chartier I really like you in Beaumont. amazing brunch too their brunch is absolutely stellar bro. have Sweet. you been for their brunch adam no, again, with kids, right? Like, it's, it's never any fun to bring your kids out. I say that as, like, a really good parent. But, you know, if I'm going to be there, if I'm spending that much on a meal, like, I, I do not want to have to parent at the same time. So I've heard yeah, good things, fair. but I'm good. <laughs> that's 100%. Fair. All right, and our second question, uh, what's your favorite festival in Edmonton? K-Days, 100%. K-Days? Nice. I love K-Days, man. Mm -hmm. I, uh... I used to go to K-Days when I was a kid. Um, we had, uh, my aunt and uncle are special needs, so we used to go for Monday Morning Magic. And nice. uh, we, would, we would get the run of the place. You'd have the whole thing to yourself. And uh, one year, <laughs> some Eskimos players were manning the rides. They would all take turns manning rides. And so uh, my sister and brother went on the haunted house, but I was too scared to go by myself. So the, the Edmonton Eskimo guy working the ride was like, well, I'll, I'll go with you. So there I am on the little tiny cart <laughs> with a oh, linebacker. This 300 pound lineman from the Eskimos. <laughs> yeah. So we, we go on and we're chugging through and you know, there's a skeleton and loud noises and all. I'm from a small town, right? Like this, this is a big, big thing. And uh, all of a sudden halfway through the ride, it shuts down. It's, 
and dead quiet, <laughs> dark. And I'm, I'm next to this guy. And all of a sudden he turns over to me and so he goes, ah! and he starts like trying to scare me. Like, please get me off the run. Just something about going to K-Days every single year. Uh, it always stood out. Even Capital X, I loved it. I'm really going to miss it this summer. I love yeah. how it just brings everyone together. You get to see the true Edmonton at K-Days. You know, all mm -hmm. these teens are all sweaty and smoking and too much PDA lining up for a ride that's, you know, an hour and a half so line. True. And <laughs> I love every little bit of it. I love yeah. how someone will drive from eight hours north of town to come here and experience it and spend $700 on a stuffy for their kids to make them happy. It just, it brings out the best in everyone. Everyone loves K-Days. I love it. Awesome. Thank you. And K-Days is awesome. It's such a shame all that there's so many good festivals. This this summer is going to look so different for so many people, but I think, well, I hope that next year people come back with a, even a bigger appreciation for all the different festivals that will return uh, and make sure that they support them uh, big time. It's like it's, just a, it's such a shame that we're missing out on all that it, stuff. It is a shame that some of the festivals we're going to miss for sure. It's a very timely mm -hmm. launch of your podcast about what's going on in Edmonton that no one can absolutely yeah. experience right now. But yeah. I like that you're playing the long game. It's good. Absolutely. Man. Write some things down. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of we actually did kind of start it when stuff was going on. Our first one was Century Casino, and we did oh, just an yeah. audio show. It wasn't the video stuff, okay. but we did, we did we did audio shows from Century, like the the racetrack casino. Yes. So we did it. We did it from out there, and that's how we that's how we kind of started. That's what we wanted it to be was like that opening, and then we went to the prospects, which I'm wearing today. Love it. Go specs. Go specs. Specs. Go yeah. and give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> right so all all of that's how it kind of morphed and you're you're right right now it's like okay now what do we do okay well extraordinary edmontonians then we'll get some we'll get some good people on and talk to them about this city right uh this is a super cool idea thank you for having me on i and really appreciate a fantastic it. segue into my next question what mm. a professional you are mr adam McHale. <laughs> what do you love about this city sir what what is the best thing about edmonton it's people. It's absolutely people. 100% it's people. You know, there's a lot to love about this city, but uh, Edmonton is unapologetically itself. Always, always, always. And I love the, the different facets of it. You know, I said I'm south side out here in suburbia. We were up, uh, my brother-in-law lives on uh, 112th Ave over by Commonwealth. You go over there, you got the old homes and stuff and the people that live over there. Uh, you go up to the north side, it's the most friendly people, the, the best eating, the best donairs, the best hole-in-the-wall pubs. And the people that you meet in all four corners of town and downtown included, it's just they're, they're so blue-collar, hardworking, willing to step up and help their fellow person. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's people, especially with a job like mine. You know, every single day I have a chance to connect with them, and I'll, I'll never take that for granted. Every single day is an opportunity to have someone else that lives here share a story with me. So it's great. Amazing. Well, my That's friend, great. It's, it has been amazing having you on the show. Great to see you again. You are gracious as usual. You were a fantastic host in the city, as I said earlier. Thank you very much for joining us on What's Up Beat Town. Me and Jamie really appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, and thank you for not bringing up any of the old standard stories. I was worried about that. So Hey, the show isn't over yet. Be careful. <laughs> I, have, I haven't hit record end yet. But... Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> right on, man. Well, Adam, again, it's, it's been a pleasure meeting you uh, virtually, and I look forward to uh, maybe sitting down and shaking hands and tipping a beer. Yeah, dumpster diving in Beaumont. I'm game for it, man. There's a good good pub right around the corner, too. <laughs> right on. Thanks again, Adam. Thanks, guys. Wow, wasn't that awesome talking to Adam McHale? So good to see him. A radio lag. I mean, he hates me saying this, but what well, radio legend here in Edmonton. Yeah. I mean, he's been on so many radio stations. Such a great guy. A real guy, which is awesome. Um, and it was just great having him on the show today. Right, Jamie? Yeah, you know what? One of these days, like his, we got to record some of these after podcast conversations that we're having because the, some of those are some pretty good stories after the fact. But yeah, he's just a like just a real genuine guy. I love that about him and uh, some cool stories. And we could have done a two hour bit with him. So we, pro we probably could have. We probably. I, 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 I'm looking forward to getting out one night and and actually sitting face to face and having a beer with that guy. Very cool. I agree 100%. Well, man, that's the show. That was that's a lot it. of fun. Thank you very much again. We got we got lots of guests coming up too. I'm talking to a couple artists that are going to come on the show, play some guitar stuff. Um, nice. We got some more happy hour stuff coming up. Um, so stay tuned. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, check us out on our new YouTube page and hit subscribe. We need subscribers. Yeah, pay attention to us. Hit subscribe and you'll find out all the details of stuff coming up. 
Um, hey, once everything opens up, we might have some prizes to give away there and all kinds of different stuff. So definitely check us out. Jamie, it's been great again, buddy. Always a pleasure, my friend. Take care, Ron. Take care. We'll see you again on What's Up, Beat Town. <laughs>